Hey there, everybody. Good morning. This is Pastor Angel Rivera, and I'm excited to be with you today. Over the last four weeks, we've been in a series called Trusting God in All Things. And this morning is part five. We're going to explore and dive deep on how life's experiences and setbacks can make it very difficult to follow Jesus. Pastor Ralph Buchanan is going to teach us some tips and we're going to explore the scriptures on how God can use those setbacks and those negative experiences and teach us how to trust Him deeper and how to develop a relationship that is going to make our communion with Him unshakable. So stay tuned, get out your devices, get out your notepads, get prepared to write notes so that you can take what you learned today, apply it to your life, and begin to develop and trust God like never before. Thank you so much, and let's dive deep. Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Ralph again, and thank you for stopping by to listen about how we can trust God with everything or in everything that we go through in our life. You know, over the past five weeks, we've been talking extensively about Proverbs chapter 3, verses uh, 5 through 6. And so we're going to go right back over there again. We're going to get into more insight on how we can trust God. And so let's pray, and then I'll get right to the subject matter. Father, we thank you again for the love that you have for us. We thank you for the word that you've given to us. We thank you for our time together in fellowship with you, centered around your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, today I'm going to take a little bit different emphasis on it. And so we're going to learn how to trust God uh, with everything that we go through, every situation that we find ourselves in, and find out how to not make excuses when it comes to following Jesus, when it comes to being committed to the Lord Jesus himself. And sometimes in life we do that. We we have a lot of excuses. Sometimes we have really good excuses. I mean, by that, good excuses meaning they're valid, they're real, they're things that you're experiencing, but still an excuse is an excuse. And so you wanna make sure that we're learning how to trust God with every situation. And we are people of circumstance and situation every day. So let's go over to Proverbs chapter 3. And let's take a look at our foundation scripture. And then we'll get right into it today. Proverbs chapter 3. And I hope you've been reading through these and going back over again and taking notes and meditating on it. I know that we can only deal with things briefly. So you can always go back on your own time and just take your time through the scripture and read line upon line and precept by precept so you can gain some instruction for your everyday life. All right, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I mean, with everything you got, your spirit, your soul, your mind, your body, everything that consists of you. Trust the Lord with your whole heart, your feelings, your emotions, uh, the way you think about things, all your thought processes. You've got to trust the Lord with that. And if you're getting into the Word on a regular basis, then your trust for God will grow larger. You'll get a greater capacity in life to trust God. And then he says, and do not lean to your own understanding. We've talked about that extensively. Our understanding is limited. And so you don't want to lean on something that has limitations. So we want to trust in the Lord because he has no limits. There are no limits with God. And we live in a day where people like where there's no limits. Well, you want to live where there's no limits, where the possibilities are endless, You want to trust God. You want to get into the word because he is the creator of all things. And if you get with him, man, the possibilities are endless. And so lean not to your own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And I talked about briefly last week about the narrow road and the wide road that leads to destruction. And I talked about how paths and ways are similar. They are synonymous to themselves, to one another. And so you want to make sure that when you understand, when God says this again, listen, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight, that you understand that your ways are not his ways and your thoughts are not his thoughts. And so you want to make sure that you bring your ways, your behaviors, your needs, the way you feel, your condition to God so he can help you and get you on the right path. I talked a little bit about a compass, having a compass in your life. And the compass for us being born again as Christians would be the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. He is the guide. He is the tour guide. He is your leader. He is your director. He is like a compass. And he keeps us 
going true north. And I've talked a little bit about true north. Magnetic north is where, you know, uh, the, the axis of the earth is. And so everything points to the north. The compass always leads you in a northern pattern. And so you want to make sure that you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, that your focus and your plans are in line with God's plans, that your purpose is God's purpose. See, things switch over after a while. Once you start to trust God, you start trusting less in yourself and more in God. And that's the key today to this generation. The generation is a self-serving generation. And we look for things that make us feel good. We look things for things to please us. We're not looking to serve or to please God. We're looking to please self. Pleasure is God to us nowadays. And so you want to make sure that you're putting your trust in God. You know, Jesus said it like this in Matthew 6. And you can read this. Read the whole chapter of Matthew 6. There's a lot of things in there that you can understand. But he talks about no man can serve two masters who either love one or hate the other or hold to one and give into the other. But you want to make sure that you cannot serve God and mammon. You have to make a decision and you have to choose. And when it comes to choosing to serve God is because you're trusting God has gotten better. You're developing a relationship of trust. And I found out in life that if I learn how to trust God properly, then I can trust people around me. It's hard to trust people around you when you don't have a trust in God because God helps us to discern. You know, a lot of times people will say this, you know, it's not uh, right to judge people. It's not right to judge people. And you are correct in one sense. In one sense, you're correct that God says we should never condemn anybody. That's what judgment means. We condemn and we judge people. But there's another part of judgment that you have to be able to know and be able to discern the difference between good and evil. And that's a type of judgment too. And you have to know when you can discern a situation, you can discern what God wants for you. You can make choices based on good discernment. So yes, one point, don't judge people or condemn people. You don't have the right to do that. You're a sinner just like everybody else is a sinner, but yet we've been made the righteousness of God. So we practice righteousness, but you have to get your discernment up. And that comes from walking with God and gaining an experience with God so that your trust will be able to lead you where you go. It's the path that you want to walk on is the narrow road. It's the straight and narrow path. So now let me just give you the, the, the focus of today. Again, I wrote down, Today, we will explore how to trust God beyond life situations and to overcome excuses which we are facing that could hinder us possibly from following Jesus. There's a lot of reasons why people don't follow Jesus. And it's more than uh, you can even imagine the excuses that we come up with, the situations, the circumstances will stop us from following Jesus and from following through with the relationship that we have with God. So now let me give you this over in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. This is going to be very important to our understanding what it means to be able to overcome excuses in our lives. And excuses take you, bad ones and good ones, to the same place. They take you nowhere. And so you don't want to excuse yourself from doing what is the right thing to do. Don't give yourself permission uh, to use an excuse to get permission to not do something that you should do, especially when you come to know that God is who he says he is. You know, he has revealed himself in such a way that you know on the inside of you, deep down in your spirit, in your heart of hearts, you know that God is who he says he is. You might be trying to work out a few details, but you know you can trust him and you're learning more about how to do that. All right, Matthew 16. Let's take a look at what Jesus had to say. I love it when Jesus is teaching directly, when it's not something that people said that he said, but when you hear the words come out of Jesus's mouth, that's really where you want to be. So in Matthew 16, verse 24, and in my Bible, there's a subtitle there that's called Discipleship is Costly. And it is costly to trust God. Why do I say that? It costs you everything that has to do with your personal feelings and your personal desires. And you have to put your feelings and your desires in the hand of Almighty God. And so it's going to cost you something to be able to do that, to make the dedicated commitment to be able to follow him. And this is why people fall short. Many times is why we can't trust God, because we don't follow through with the things that the Bible teaches us that we should do. 
Now listen carefully. I believe this will set you free. If you really, 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 really want to be free, you really, really want to know what it's like to trust God. Listen, it says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, if your desire is to follow God and to come after God, he's given you really now the step-by-step, -step, blow by blow process that it's going to take. Listen, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Look how powerful that is. He said, first let him deny himself. What does it mean to deny yourself? What it basically means is to defer gratification. In other words, like going to college is deferred gratification. You enroll one, one day, and maybe four years later you get a degree. That is deferring the gratification of living and doing what you want to do so that you can get something better in the future. And what he's saying here to deny yourself, he wants you to defer your gratification of the flesh and deny yourself. Pick up your cross, which is your personal commitment, dedication, and your personal service to God and the future of serving God and learning how to walk with God. So look, Jesus said, if you wish to come after me, now this doesn't apply if you don't want to follow God. There are a lot of people today that don't want to follow God because they think it's too tough, too hard, too difficult. He says, if anyone wishes or desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now listen in verse 25. This is really good. He says in verse 25, for whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. That doesn't even make sense when you really think about it in that term. Whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. I mean, that's got to be a hard statement for them to hear. And then it says, but whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. If you want to have a life, the life that you have now must be lost. If you want to have a life in the future and a good quality life, a life that is centered around God and living and life abundantly, he says, you will lose this life to gain that life. So in that same light, think about how you're living right now. Are you satisfied with the way that your life is now? Are you totally happy with where you are in life? He's saying here for the better quality of life, he says, whoever wishes to save his own life, he says, he shall lose it. So if your focus is on saving your life and doing what you want to do, he says, eventually you're going to lose it. He says, but whoever loses his life or gives up or denies himself or makes a dedicated commitment to him and follow after him, he says, he shall find his life. I know this for a fact. I did not find my life until I found a relationship with God. And many of you out there, are still trying to stuff in that God spot, in that God place on the inside of you, things, material things, you know, relationships, education, and all these things are great if they're in per proper order. If they're in the priority order that God has said is, is in Matthew 6, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you have need of that could get in the way, shall be added unto you. So you want to make sure that you are trusting God, that when you give your life to him, that God knows what's best for your life, and he's not going to leave you out of anything that's good. The Bible says God gives great pleasure in uh, meeting the needs of his children, just like you would as a parent. You have great pleasure meeting the needs of your children, but you also want primarily what's best for your children. And so that's the same approach that God takes. So it's important for us to know that when Jesus said that. Now, what excuse or reason? I wrote this down so because I thought about this myself a lot. What excuse or reason would stop me from going all in and following Jesus? What excuse or what reason would be enough for me to not go all in? You know, what I, what I mean by that, many of us go to church. And that's not going all in. Many of us have a Bible and possess a Bible, but that's not going all in. Many of us know people who are Christian, and we come from a Christian family, but that's not going all in. That is hanging around the fringes of a relationship with God. Having all of that around you does not make you committed to God. And uh, you know yourself. You've gone to church in times past. Some of you go to church now. You go in empty, 
and you'll come out just as empty. What we want to do is we want to go in empty and come out filled, brimming over with the love of God in our lives. And so it's so important. So what would be the excuse that you would use or the reason that would stop you or hinder you from going all in to follow Jesus? So, man, I was really thinking about this a lot. And I want you to think with me. Here's some of the excuses and some of the things that we could possibly use. And when I read off these things, you might resemble some of them. It's not a condemnation. It's an observation. I just want you to observe your own behavior and observe your own reasoning and excuses that you might have used today or in times past so that you didn't 100% dedicate yourself to following Jesus. Because remember over here, he says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must first deny himself, pick up his cross and follow. And then he goes on to say, and whoever wishes to save his life, he says, he shall lose that life. But whoever loses his life or gives up his life for my sake, he then will find his life. He then will find purpose for your living. Now, here's some things that could be excuses that you might have said or heard somebody say. And so listen. It's too hard. That's one good excuse. It's just too hard to go to church, to read my Bible, to follow God, especially none of my friends are doing it. You know, it's real hard when they're going out and they're having fun and doing things. And I got to be at home. You make it like a chore, like it's some dubious responsibility that you might have. And so it's just too hard for you. You're just not willing because of the hardship of it all. The other thing is I wrote down is... Uh, I need to get myself together first. That's the biz, biggest excuse I've heard people say. I said, man, why don't you come on and come to the fellowship with me? Why don't you uh, come and hang out with us? Man, we're, we're doing a beach bonfire where we're going to have a picnic down there. We're going to have a good time, play some music, and hang out with each other and learn some stuff about God. Man, I can't come in a situation like that because I need to get myself together. Do you know Satan will use that excuse over and over again? If you could get yourself together, we wouldn't need God. If you could get yourself together, we wouldn't need the biblical system. We wouldn't need the word of God. The problem is you can't get yourself together enough to be uh, service, serviceable before God. You can't do it. There's no way that you can make yourself be what God wants you to be. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that he can meet all the needs to divine justice and that we can be forgiven of our sins. And the only way we'll become serviceable and willing to commit to God is when we give ourselves to God so that he could fix us. You can't get yourself together enough to make yourself presentable to God. So that would be just an excuse. All right. The other thing that I wrote down that I've heard a lot of times is, is I'll do it when I'm older. Well, you're presuming and assuming that you're going to get old. You know, today, life is not promised today. And it's not even promised tomorrow. But all you have right now is this moment that you have. And so if you say, I'm going to go to school when I get a little older. I'm going to go serve God when I get a little older. Or I'm going to change my life when I get a little older. You know, you keep pushing things back and not making the dedication and not making the commitment to make things happen while you have the ability to do it. You keep saying, yeah, when I get a little older, I'm too young pretty much right now to do the God thing. I, I just, I'll wait till I'm a little older. That's a great excuse. That's one of the biggest excuses that people use to not follow Jesus. Another thing, I have time. I'm only human. <laughs> you think you got time. I have time. I'm only human. So when you think you have time, you have no time. See, there is no time but the present time. So it's an excuse to say that I have time and then use the excuse, I'm only human. See, being human is everybody. We're all human. And why do some people have time and why don't you have time? See, because it's an excuse. It's something you're using because you don't want to commit to something. He goes on to say, when I, when I wrote these things down, uh, it doesn't look like much fun. And it doesn't look like much fun going to church and hanging out with a bunch of Christians. And, you know, I can't smoke. I can't drink. I can't uh, be promiscuous. I, you know, I can't cuss and all the stuff that people like to do in life. They love to be able to do what they want, say what they want, feel how they want to feel, you know, and not feel bad about it. But again, it doesn't look like much fun. Well, again, most of the people, you know, that had all the fun in the world 
ended up in ruin because there was no discipline in their life. And what happens is when you finally come to God after having so much fun, it takes so long for you to recover from the things that you were doing that you said, well, I didn't want to serve God because it wasn't enough fun. And all that fun that you have now is what God is doing to restore you. He's bringing you back to your regular self, trying to get you back in your right mind. All the drugs and all the alcohol and all the promiscuous living, all the things that we did. Again, this is not a judgment on anybody because we've all been there and we've all done some of that stuff, if not all of it. And so having fun, you want to talk about having fun? Having fun in your right mind, you'll have more fun than you'll ever have in your entire life. But having fun in the wrong mind, you don't even know what you did last night. You don't even know what you did and who you did it with last night. So my point is you want to be cognizant. You want to be aware. You don't want to use the excuse that I don't follow God. I don't want to be all in with Jesus because there's not enough fun in it for me. I mean, that is so immature and so out of sorts for you. You want to learn how to walk in purpose. There's nothing like walking in purpose and having fun in purpose and on purpose. That's so important. These are the reasons these are the excuses that we may give sometimes because we don't want to follow Jesus 100%. Now, listen, I got a couple more here. Uh, the other thing is, here's a big one. God will understand because he loves me. God will understand. Why won't I follow Jesus 100%? Because God knows I'm not ready and he'll understand. And because he loves me, see, he'll just give me a pass. God will just give me a pass. Well, no. It's because God loves you that you don't get a pass. It's because God loves you that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, so you never get a pass just because God loves you. In fact, if he loves you, like the Bible says, and he does, then he is going to prod you to move forward. He's going to lead you forward. He's going to have you to walk in purpose. He's going to have you walk in making a decision and sticking to it so that you can rule out the excuses that could inhibit you from following Jesus and getting life and the real kind of life, the Zoe kind of life, the God quality of life. That's what God is after. He wants to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And when we learn to trust God and not have these kinds of excuses, man, I'll tell you, we'll be doing so much better in our lives. Now, here's the last thing that people just say, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I remember teaching some time ago early in my ministry and I would teach the word as God would give it to me. And some people would say to me, they'd actually say, you know, Pastor Ralph, what you're saying is true. And I even see it right there in the Bible. It's in the pages. But you know what? I just can't do it. And I say, well, why can't you do it? I, I can't tell you why I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I know I'm talking to some people out there who feel like these things that I just mentioned are excuses that they've used and they are the reason why they don't commit 100% to follow Jesus. But you got to get to a place in your life where you grow up as a spiritual adult and you learn how to do what you need to do and what's important and what's purposeful in your life and learn how to trust God and give your life to him so that he can change things for you and change things going forward, not just for you, but for your children's children's children generations down the road when you begin to get it together when you begin to trust god and you begin to stop making excuses that will hinder you then you will open the door for your generation remember the narrow road is learning how to trust god and walking true north and that wide road that road there is the lead that leads to destruction and if you're destroying yourself you are leaving your family your children your generation a legacy of destruction. This is not bad news. This is good news. Now that you know that that's what happens, it just doesn't affect your life. Your life affects every life that's associated with it. Every person that you have influence over, this life that you live will affect them either positively or negatively. So you want to make sure that you're on a straight and narrow and not the wide road that leads to destruction. And you want to make sure that you're learning how to follow Jesus unobstructedly. In other words, not having anything cause you to falter or to fall out or to fall back, but move forward. That's what God is looking for. Forward motion from us. So it's important. Here's the, here's the, here's the key. How do we do it now? How do we do it? It's called total surrender. Total and complete 
surrender to God. That's what we have to learn to do. And you got to pray for that. You got to say to God, Lord, I surrender all to you. I give everything that I have to you and I give my all to you. And when I give my all to him, he gives his all to us. So important. Now, let's take a look at Proverbs. Take you back over to the Proverbs. This is so important for us to grab hold of. Proverbs 23. Very powerful discourse. When I read this, you know, I've read through Proverbs many times, but sometimes verses just stick out and stand out and they shout out to you. And when it does that, you have to take note of it. So in Proverbs 23, looking at verse 26, it says this. This is God speaking uh, through one of the Proverbs. And one of the, the Proverbs is from the wisest man that ever lived. Solomon wrote most of the Proverbs. And it says this in verse 26. Listen, give me your heart, my son, and let your eyes delight in my ways. Now, when I talk about surrender, I'm talking about give God your heart. Give God your dedication. Give God your commitment. That's where you start. You start with doing that and God will finish the rest. He says, give me your heart, my son. He says, and let your eyes delight in my ways. In other words, let your eyes observe my ways. Well, when your eyes begin to observe the ways of God, you begin to develop a trust in God. You begin to notice God and his, the experiences that you have with God. You start to see where God has saved you and delivered you and brought you from a mighty long way. I mean, that's what testimony is all about, is learning how to do that. So once I surrender to God, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to share with you out of the book of James. Let's go over to the book of James. This is so important that once you surrender, surrender is like this. You raise your hands before God and you're basically giving your all to him and you're telling him, hey, I'm done. I, I've had enough. I want you to take the reins now and I want you to bring me to the place that I need to be in you. I want to follow you for the rest of the days of my life so that I can have the life that you've promised me in the Bible. That's what you're doing when you're surrendering to God. You're getting it on his terms. You're getting it his way. And you are going to be the beneficiary of God blessing your life in such a way that you'll be able to be a blessing to other people. Here in James chapter 4, and I'm going to read, uh, starting with verse, let's go to verse six and I'll read down into it because this is so important. This is how we overcome excuses. This is how we surrender to God. You know, we rule out excuses. And one of the things you need to learn, you know, people tell you, don't have quit in your vocabulary. I say quit in a vocabulary is good if it's in the right place. So I always tell people quit quitting, quit giving up. You know, so if you understand that if God wants you to quit quitting, to not give up, then quit fits perfectly in your vocabulary. Now, listen, he says in verse six of James chapter four, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says God is opposed to the proud and he gives grace to the humble. And then he says this, submit, therefore, to God. In other words, surrender. He says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. When you resist the devil, you're resisting those things that would stop you from committing 100% to God in his way. So anything that would help you not to commit to God would be of Satan because he does not want you to commit to God. He says, submit therefore to God. Listen, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The excuses will remove themselves. You know, the excuses will not be able to have an effect on you any longer. Because once you quit making excuses and you quit quitting and you quit falling down, then God is going to promise you this. Listen, in verse eight, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And then he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. He says, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-mindedness is always a precursor to quitting and making excuses and falling down. How does God want us to be in total surrender? He wants you to give your life completely over to him, to trust him so that he can make a new way of living for you, that he can give you what you've always wanted and what you've always hoped for, which is the hope and the peace and the life that God gives you is life now and life here and life eternal. That's where you're headed towards eternal life. So quit quitting and quit making excuses and trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding.
and he will make your path straight in Jesus' name.